but there was also a game that also came out in 2007. But if we're getting really technical, it actually didn't come out, well, it came out originally in 2005. So the next part is actually going to be Hack and Roll Remix. Now this one's a bit of a stretch here, but I think it does work out. So let's just talk about that one. In 2005, Nintendo would release the Nintendo DS, which was the successor to the Game Boy Advance line. Consider experimental at the time having two screens and a touchscreen down below, there were many games that would utilize the touchscreen in different unique ways. And the Pac-Man series would double down on this feature and make an original game that could only be found on the console. Released the same year that the system released in 2005, we would get Pack and Roll. Pack and Roll made excessive use of the touchscreen in that the entire control mechanism of the game was controlled using the stylus download to roll Pac-Man across each stage. The game was actually a prequel of sorts to the Pac-Man lore as we know it, where Pac-Man would be training to become a Pac-Knight under the tutelage of the Pac-Master. Now, you could say this does tie in a bit to the, the Pac-Man World series. Bit of a stretch, but I would believe personally. We would also see some different uh, Pac-Members. Uh, members I wouldn't call them family, but they're definitely uh, pac manies and we'd also see another version of Miss Pac-Man, thought to be the Miss Pac-Man, known as Pac-Girl. But the big story of the game that's not featured here in this remix was that the four ghosts would summon a banished ghost of sorts in hopes that it would finally stop Pac-Man for good. This was a ghost named Gulvis. And what Gulvis does is turn the pack members into spears. Quite literally making their arms and legs disappear and kidnapping them, scattering them across the pack land. But, of course, where there is evil, there is good, and we would have a fairy known as Crystal that would help Pac-Man on his journey. Pac-Man, of course, being the only one left to save the rest of the pac manese I don't know if that's actually the name here, pac manese but I'm just going to roll with it. So, Pack and Roll was... You could call it a tech demo, but I feel like more so that would have been the DS game Pack Picks. We're not going to talk about it here though, but just know that that was another game. So was Pack and Roll good? I think it was personally, but it's one of those games where you really can't play it unless it's on the original system. And Namco knew that quite well. So in 2007, they would release a new Namco Museum known as Namco Museum Remix. And these all focused on Pac-Man in a spear form, reinventing different Namco games to make use of the Wii's motion controls and pointer. So we'd have series such as Galga, Rally X, Gator Panic, which was originally an arcade game where you smash gators physically. <laughs> and then another one we'll be talking about in the next part. But the focus of this one, of course, was Pack and Roll Remix. Pack and Roll Remix wasn't just a port of the original Pack and Roll. Rather, it not only changed some elements, making it slightly harder thanks to the new control scheme being physically controlled. Well, a controller, not physically. <laughs> you get the points! But it would actually add in some new elements as well, such as a whole extra finale world that wasn't presented in the original game. So, whether you call it a remake, a remaster, it still is pack and roll to its very core. And that said, Let's check it out. I'm actually surprised this one took as long as it did to come out on other consoles, because I feel like it would have worked well even outside the Wii's control schemes, because the only thing it did with the Wii is where if you shake the Wii mode, it would have Pac-Man roll faster, which we'll show off in just a moment here. But I think even with just the normal control, it would have worked well in any other case. With that said, let's get straight into it. Now, how is it going to boot me into the game? Okay, right off the main menu. So, I'll talk more about this in the next part, but part of the Amco Museum Remix was having Pac-Man as a spear, and so to access Pack and Roll Remix, you'd have to physically roll to the game hub. And this would be where you would see the game. This is what you first load into the first time you play Pack and Roll Remix. Now, the music itself is, ah, uh, I mean, it works, but I'm so used to the original music from the DS game, which was used as the hub for Namco Museum Remix. But I'm babbling on, let's just start with stage one, and let's see how the controls match here. 
Now, for being a DS game, I think they did pretty well when it came to porting it to the Wii. But even porting it here in the Unity engine for Nintendo Switch, because that's where we're playing here, I would say it feels pretty good so far. A little more loose than what I remember it as, but overall, I'm impressed. Okay, so A has his boost. I call it personally because the sound Pac-Man makes the F boost. Because it sounds like he says, F. <laughs> it's stupid, I know, but I go with it. So the objective of pack and roll I guess the best way to compare it would probably be a game like Marble Madness from the arcades. You physically roll Pac-Man. If this were the DS original, you'd actually have to drag the stylus aggressively, as a matter of fact, to get him moving. In order to boost, you'd have to go on like the very top edge of the screen to have him boost. This is something that, honestly, I believe could only be played on the original system, because it is an absolute beast to try to get just right to emulate on anything else. It works, it's just not as easy. But you can tell where there was definitely some work that had to be done when you were porting it to consoles, but it works. It does feel like it's a big game to its own right. And then because it was ported to the Wii, uh, the remix, there are elements that are touched up, such as the UI. It still looks crusty though, like it came straight from the Wii. I wonder how they got it to work. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some collaboration to use something like the Dolphin uh, emulator. I don't know. Another thing different from the original DS version is the way you encounter ghosts. If you encountered a ghost in the DS version, you'd have to actually physically tap the ghost on the bottom of the screen to get them to flee. If you weren't fast enough, they could even take almost double or even kill you outright. Here though, once they attack you, they just attack you. It's simple as that. And I think that's the way it should be. I don't think it needs to be anything more excessive than what it was. You do still feel though there is that bit of basicness from the DS version and its level design here. These early levels weren't changed at all. The later ones are of course, but here, this is how it was originally featured in DS version. And yeah, I do have the nostalgia for it, I remember it fondly. I think it works, I think it does work. Does it feel short? I mean yeah, it does feel short, it was a DS game. If we were buying this on its own, if it didn't have like any extra features or it wasn't featured in a compilation, if it's not for the DS, then I don't think it's worth it at full price. The reason I have Pac-Man Roll in my collection was because the DS had just come out. Me and my older brother, we didn't have a lot of games in our collection. So our parents said, you get one game, make it count. <laughs> So we went to Best Buy and we just looked at the uh, the shelves to see what game stood out. I saw a Pack and Roll because I recognized Pac-Man and I went with that one. My brother, he got Bomberman for the DS. Which, for those that haven't played Bomberman on the DS, let me just say, that was the one to get. That was the one to get. I don't think I'm able to get all the way back that way. No. I'm gonna pass on those original ghosts over there. So let's just keep going. I don't think that's all of the... No. I, I don't think that was a perfect run to the stage. No. I need to uh, get the rest of the ghost. But the best thing about Bomberman DS was that it supported DS download play. So if you didn't have a cartridge physically, if you had a DS, you could download a version of the game that had limited features to be able to play with others. So playing Bomberman with DS download play was essentially the entire multiplayer mode and up to, I believe, eight players at a time. It was a lot of fun. So this is where you have to know how to use the F-Boost. Thankfully, it's just a push of the button here in Pack and Roll Remix. Pack and Roll on the DS wasn't one that I played a lot. Part of that was because of its control mechanism, especially having to swipe it as much as you did. It's, it works, it's easier than it sounds, but sometimes it can be a bit excessive. Especially trying to get the F boost to work. I feel like I was going to destroy the top of my DS because of how close and how quick you have to swipe it to get to that position. It's not perfectly executed. I think it works better here just being able to push a button. I wish what they would have done was have us use like the shoulder pads, uh, the L and R button on the DS instead. Because when you're holding the system and you have to drag it with the stylus, I think it works better that way. I know there are some that say the way you hold the DS, that maybe not so much, 
but I think it would have been better than what we have here. <laughs> oh, I fell. Oh. All right, uh, don't do that again. <laughs> I don't think that fall was actually present in the original version. I have to do a double check of that. But part of that is just how they made the game harder because of its new control scheme. You didn't have a touch screen, so they were able to get away with making the game harder as a result. Part of that too was making it like parts like those you could fall off much easier. Alright, boost up. That's everything in the stage, so go for the clear. It's gonna show perfect. Yahoo! Yahoo! I'll take it. All right, stage four, and I believe this is where we should start seeing some of the unique abilities of Pack and Roll. Boost up. So the first world of the game is known as Pack Town, or Castle Pack. It's essentially this big castle fairground where, of course, remember the story was Pac-Man learning to become a Pack knight So the first ability in the game in the form of these candies is the Knight Form. The Knight Form makes Pac-Man slower but he's able to become immune to certain projectiles. And additionally, because of his heavy weights, he'd actually go deep underwater. And additionally, we have crates like the wooden ones he can go right through, but then he's able to smash melt crates, which you can't normally do with normal Pac-Man. So part of the game too is having to combine these abilities that you find on the stage and being able to use them at the right moments. Nice and easy, you've got the checkpoint. So we go up this way. I remember this is the section that gave me a lot of trouble playing on the touch screen. Part of that too is because you need to time it just right to get all the ghosts in one fell swoop. Well, we go this way, because we have the pack night form, we can go underwater and get all the pellets we need. The original game did have some bonuses if you perfect each stage. The biggest form in that game though was diamond collectibles. And the diamonds would be used for a bonus world that once you beat the game, you'd be able to play some extra stages. The first unlockable though was another version of Pac-Man that actually featured being able to use the two screens. It was gimmicky of course, but it worked. And it was cool being able to play it on a big screen compared to what we saw before was simply playing on a small crunch screen or even just other ways of the Namco Museum. All right, all right, get up, get up. One. Oh no, no, no. Two. Uh, I'm not going to be fast enough for the other one, but let's go this way. I think there might be another pellet. Yeah. Oh, I needed... Why? Ow, that hurt. Alright, uh, that's it for here. I messed up because I didn't have that. So you're probably thinking, why am I going around the stage doing nothing if it usually doesn't amount to getting where I need to go? Well, that's because of the gold skates. Just like the original, you need to have a certain number of pellets in order to proceed through the Golden Gates. If you don't, then you have to explore more and get some more pellets. That's the big thing with the game and trying to get through it is just simply exploring, going through the world design. It becomes harder much more so later on, especially the bonus world, which I'm not going to cover here because length, timing, but... If you want a real challenge, get to the final world of Pack and Roll Remix, because it's nothing compared to the DS original. Alright, this is the last stage of the first world of the game. There is no boss fight in the first world, because this was meant to be just one big tutorial area. But I'm thinking we should probably play the second world just to show a little more off of Pack and Roll Remix. And just what else there is. But the second ability is the Feather Cap. Which, yeah, I love the lime green that's happening here. <laughs> the Feather Cat makes Pac-Man go faster, but also gives a brief moment of being able to float in the air. Which is important if you want to be able to get to certain areas further ahead. And he's much lighter compared to normal Pac-Man, so he's able to essentially walk across the water as opposed to floating. And even objects like these, the ramps, where I can just go right up it with no problem. Let's keep it going. Cross through. Yeah, look at the speed on that. This is a big open area. We just gotta grab all the pellets. One, two, three. 
But no, for a DS game, honestly, even earlier on, this came out the same year as the DS release, it was impressive. Even just making use of the touchscreen, where some were still trying to find ways that they wanted to use the touchscreen. I think it worked well. But sometimes you see vehicles like those ones, you need to use the dash to get on the level. Nice and easy. Let's find the way through. Oh, come on, where's the way? Backwards. F! F! Wait, no, no, where's the exit? There it is. Build his gates. Nice and easy. One of my favorite levels in Pack and Roll Remix was actually... And I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. One of my favorite levels in Pack and Roll, the original Pack and Roll, was actually in the fourth world, where what they had you do was go through this entire... It's like a tunnel, I guess is the best way to put it. A ramp. Think of it kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog. I messed up there. I wanted that perfect. I wanted it. But think of it kind of like the uh, Sonic 2 half pipe. And the big thing was you would go down the half pipe, gaining speed, trying to get all the pellets, eat all the ghosts. That was a fun one. Especially when you try to get like as much speed as possible on there. But it's not here in the remix version, unfortunately. So, I mean, there are things that they got rid of and there's some things that they made better. It's a mixed bag. So, Remix isn't going to replace the original DS experience, but I think it was fine for what it was and when it released. I mean, the fact that they were able to take a DS game, give it the remaster treatment, but then put it on consoles too, it's almost unheard of by today's standards. I mean, just look at Nintendo, they're trying to get rid of everything from their uh, old uh, Wii U days. Yeah, I still can't believe that Nintendo, because of what they're doing with the eShop, it's going to be much harder to play some of the older games. Uh, NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and then even some Wii titles that are on the Wii U. I think it's anti-consumerism, but I feel like that's a conversation that's not for this video. Alright, go up. I know I missed some pellets on the way up, but it's whatever. And that's the standard, uh, candy. Yeah, the... Uh, all the uh, abilities... Oh, this is just like what I was talking about earlier. Are actually candies. Chocolates, to be more specific. So you get the night chocolate, the flying chocolate, which I think it's a Pegasus. I don't know. And then the normal chocolates. Normal chocolate makes Pac-Man normal. <laughs> Alright, nice and easy. Down the pipe. I'm not gonna boost just yet. Take on all the ghost combo! A little more, a little more. Even the music's pretty good for the DS, uh, I'm not gonna say it's like one of my top of all time, but I feel like it's good, pack and roll. It's got a decent soundtrack. Alright, so, I missed the ghost, so of course this ain't gonna be a perfect run. Now again, with the golden skate, if you don't have enough pellets, you're able to go on ahead, and that would take you back to the start of the stage. So this one just loops. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Alright, stage two. We got two more stages to go, including the boss fight, so let's just get through it. This is a fun one because it takes you going straight ahead. Let's roll on down. Speed boost. Would I say there are some stages that feel like they play themselves? Ah, uh, sometimes. Sometimes it does feel that way. And I think part of that too was because this was released on the DS, it kind of gives you a break of having to roll your hands on the, uh, the screen. I don't think it's bad by any means, but sometimes there are stages where it feels like you want just a little more control of Pac-Man, but you don't really have that. Alright. No, no! Don't fall down! Alright, get back. I always do love different themes of worlds. The jungle theme here reminds me a bit of Pac-Mania because of jungly steps. Even though that one didn't look much like a jungle at all. Really, I don't think there's been a lot of like jungle exposure in the Pac-Man series. Not the Pac-Man world, I guess. Well, no, not really. Because the most common Pac-Man world uh, themes I can think of are, of course, the water world, there's always like a green world, a lava world. Part of that too is just video game design where they always have like these similar themes because games always tend to match those. 
such as the evil lair always being associated with uh, magma and lava and being like a volcano sometimes too. All right, we're not gonna take the gold here because there are some bonuses up this way. Nice and easy. This is the part that's very easy to struggle with if you're playing the DS version, but because we have the more precision of the control stick, it's just a little more manageable. All right, exit wins. Keep going, one more. Pizza! So I didn't mention this, but in pack and roll, if you want extra health, you actually have to find it yourself through the stages through some special food items, such as that pizza. That's how you get extra bars of health. And later on, you might need it because of how difficult the game gets, but eh, it's manageable. All right, so we could get the pack neck form, but we have to roll up these ramps here, and that doesn't make it any easier. So let's just sit with, ow. Normal Pac-Man at boost. Normal Pac-Man for now, and make your way up. This is what help is the speed boost here. All right, go for the ghost. Whoa, the boost! Get him! Yeah! All right, now let's go for the pack knight form. And as long as we have the F boost, we'll be just fine. Again, just the execution is way easier compared to the DS version. All right, go this gate. And let's keep going. Oh, I just missed something there. It was probably a fruit or a pellet of sorts. I don't think it was anything major, so I'm not too worried. Whoa! Come on, let me get, let me get him! All right, all right, one more, one more. Roll it down! Get into my mouth! Whoa! Go, go, go. <laughs> Do I have enough? Zarr! One of my favorite things about Pack and Roll is Golovis himself. If you don't have enough pellets, it makes a sound where it's... Zah! I don't think Golovis is a good character, and I mean about like design. It's going for a punk rock theme where he's got the mohawk, he's got like the unease that show a bit, and then he's got his guitar. guitar. You might not think it, but the guitar itself is actually sentient. It actually talks quite a bit in the original DS version. I didn't expect that, but it's a real thing. <laughs> I won't judge though. I won't judge. Alright. Golver Skate. Let's keep going. Took a hit out of me, but we're fine. This is when I would like to normal form just so we go a little faster. Get the F boost a bit. Oh! Ghost! See, uh, th oh, this way. Banana! Potassium! Ow! Get one! Alright, let's just keep going. Probably go over Yep! Zarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
boost. F. Golvis Gate. And just like before, it goes right back to the start, so if you miss, you're able to just take it back again. Yahoo! Ah, oh, I thought I was gonna say Yahoo. Alright, so world two, and this is where we have the first boss with Golvis. Now, Golvis isn't your ordinary ghost, as I mentioned before. Oh yeah, look at that absolute punk. Absolute punk. Golvis will constantly chase you through the stage. If you're not careful, he can do quite a bit of damage. Unfortunately, just like the story tells us, power bullets aren't very effective against him. But what we don't know, or what we're about to find out anyways, is that they are vulnerable to him. Rather, you just need three power pellets. I know, stacking power pellets? That sounds like a dangerous concept. Oh, 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 oh god. Ah, ah, ah. All right, one pellet. So, we go around each stage looking for three pellets in order to take on Golbus! As we avoid him trying to smash us with his guitar power. All right, three. And then we go and chase him. All right, I know for this third one I'm gonna need the next form because it's under the water. Where is it? Okay, one. But no, Gorbis can be a real threat, especially in the later stages. Especially when it starts to play with more of the design, where we don't just have this always moving circle. We have unique areas where it is more dangerous and where he is able to try to corner us or even we fall because of the world. We're not gonna cover it here though because I think that's enough to cover for Pac-Man, uh, Pac and Roll. But hey, if you wanna see me play more of this, the best place to let me know is in the comments down below. And look, World 3 is gonna be a candy-based world. The Candelon. All right, so we're turning to the arcade. And let's see what we get. Oh, wow, that has a lot of tokens. Wow, I think that's the most we've gotten for a single game. So I bet a lot of this is just going through the game, uh, probably playing to completion. Yeah. You can now play Pack Motos. Perfect, because that's going to be the next game that we cover. A cool balloon gates. We got the World 1 background music. Castle Pack. I was kind of right about that. And then we got Fancy Sea. Cool. So, all right, that was Pack and Roll Remix. I like the game for what it is, especially on the DS. Is it the strongest Pac-Man game? I mean, it's a DS game, so it's not gonna be up there, but I still think it's a solid game altogether. There's certainly worse in the collection. There's certainly worse. But up next, this is one that many may not know about, but it was featured in the Namco Museum Remix Collection. And honestly, I'm surprised it even got this Pac-Man reskin but I think it works well for what it is. So up next is, nope, not that one, not that one. Nope, 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 nope. There it is. Up next is Pac-Motos. <laughs> 